Well, hello and welcome to another edition of the House Whisperer Show on WWDB Talk 860. I'm Barry Reisman, inviting you to stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roof to the basement, featuring professional home inspector Jack Milne. And Jack, this is our, our last afternoon show, isn't it? Yeah, how about it, Barry? I mean, I've been working with you in WWDB since uh, September. Oh, wow. Long and time agree- flies when you're having a good time. Oh, I love I love doing these shows. Well, let's just tell everybody, uh, starting next week, uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. So as I like to say, get up, smell the coffee, read the paper, listen to the house whisper. What a great way to start a Sunday. A- absolutely, can't wait. Uh, Jack, uh, you know you've got a great su- you've got a great subject for today, and I know you want to talk about that, and you want to say hello to your sponsors. So it's all yours. Well, thank you, Barry. Yeah, today's topic is let's paint, let it roll. And um, I thought this was like an ample time to do this show because f- I think finally uh, winter's over, and so it's time to get outside and and smell, you know, smell the the, the spring, uh, which I think all of us have missed. And at the same time, it's also time to take a look at your uh, around your house and say, man, this room's looking a little drab. You know, why don't we spruce it up a little bit? So I thought I would take uh, today's segment and, and walk you through as to how to do it correctly. So before we kick in, uh, of course, I want to thank my sponsors. Burrow Exterminating, they do termite and radon testing. Uh, they're out of Glen Olden, and they handle Chester County, Delaware County, portions of Philadelphia, Montgomery County. So if you need any help with them, why don't you see their website at burrowexterminating.com. Buxmont Inspections, um, they handle on-site sewage evaluations, uh, and they do both Pennsylvania and New Jersey. So for my New Jersey listeners, keep that in mind. And Rob Bowie, I believe, is one of the best. So if you need some help from them, go to BuxmontInspections.com. Pest Blaster, they too service New Jersey and Pennsylvania, and they're one of our largest vendors. Um, they help us with radon, mold, wood-destroying insects, uh, as well as pest removal. So if you've got that pesky pest, uh, and you got to get rid of them, go ahead and find Pest Blaster at PestBlaster.com. BrainFlushGear.com, it's as simple as that, folks. Like I said last week, uh, I just got my shirts back for a trip that we're taking to Kentucky uh, on our motorcycles, and uh, they came up with uh, some great, great ideas. And you can see them on the website. So uh, visit them and see if they can help you out with any concepts that you may be interested in. And I always finish last with Tri-County Inspection Company. Um, I kind of toot my horn every week, but I'm darn proud of this company and my staff. And uh, I have five full-time home inspectors. We carry or we cover, excuse me, 15 counties. So uh, over the past few weeks, I've been from Ventnor, uh, to 40th Street in Philadelphia. I'm heading up to the north part of Hunterdon County next week. So you never know where you're going to find me, but wherever you need us, we're there for you. And our website is, uh, is good old tcinspect.com. So a uh, quick visit to the email box, because, again, I always like reading these and passing them along. Uh, Ryan is from Hatboro. Uh, Jack, you did my home inspection in February, and you mentioned your show. I can't be available every Sunday, but I do like the podcast. Yay. Thank you very much, Ryan. Anyway, I received, or excuse me, I reached back to your website and listened to the show about skylights that you did in December. You brought the idea up to my wife and I during the inspection. Listening to that episode helped us make the decision to move forward. Thanks for the, uh, the variety of topics. Can't wait until next week. So, Ryan, thanks for the update. And please pass the show along to your friends and family. Any questions or topics that you would like me to discuss, please email me at thehousewhispershow at gmail.com. And, of course, for previous episodes like Ryan's, you know, visit the website at thehousewhispershow.com. And what I like, podcasts are available all the time at www.dbam.com. And like we talked about at the beginning of the show, 6114 is the big day. It's literally around the corner, like next week. Uh, so uh, be awake, be ready, and here I come. <laughs> so, uh, today, we're, we're all set. Uh, I'm sorry, Barry? I said we're, we're all set for 11 o'clock. Yeehaw. So at this point, let's paint. Let it roll. So 
Again, spring was wet, it was cold, it was miserable, summer's around the corner, and so as we shake off this winter of 2014, I think it's time to revisit our rooms where we live and add some color. Antique white only goes so far. And today's pink colors are so vibrant, and I don't know who comes, you know, up with these names and who the paint companies hire, but, you know, I think there's about 100 names for the color white. And I don't even know, Barry, if white is officially a color. Uh, <laughs> but, but someone came up with it. So I'm going to try to get you off white except for ceilings, but we'll touch on that. Anyway, picking a color for any room should be a collaborative effort. And I think both the male and female should have a choice. But, guys, eventually you might have to give it up because the bride usually wins the, the, the color selections. Um, but these, this is some of the stuff that you're going to need. First off, paint. I guess before you paint, you have to buy paint. So keep in mind that a gallon of paint covers about 400 square feet, and you have to count on a second coat. And no matter what the ads say, I don't believe them because the paint only goes so far, and you always want to give a second coat for that final deep tone. I would suggest that you buy kills, which is K-I-L-Z, if you have any dark colors that you have to get rid of. Uh, and again, you might need two coats of kills to make it work. They, they sell it in two types, oil as well as water base. Uh, personally, I prefer the oil base. It's smelly. I mean, you've got to vent really well, but it really covers far better than the water base. And if you're trying to hide maroons and hunter greens, navy blues, blacks, and chalkboard, uh, these are the hardest colors to hide. So before you paint, you got to prime the walls. As to rollers, I like the 3 8 inch nap. Um, you know, and buy more than you need. You get three in a pack. They're cheap. Um, and by the way, when the job is done, or at least the first coat, keep in mind, touch-ups are always going to be needed. So put the roller and the handle in those plastic shopping bags that you get from your grocery stores and twist them up tight. Um, and, and this will actually keep the roller damp so you can use it again. What a great way to save money and, and be ready to literally roll again. And most residential rollers are 9 inches, but personally, I like the 3 and 4 inch rollers too uh, because there's going to be tight areas where that big old 9 inch roller is not going to fit. So I learned that wrap, wrapping in the shopping bag uh, from my own professional painters. So I want to pass that one along, and believe me, I, I love sharing this stuff. Uh, brushes, um, you're going to need them. Uh, you really don't need the three-inch brush, but you definitely need a one-inch touch-up and one-and-a-half to two-inch angle brush. I think those are priceless. And don't go cheap on these. They sell those, those really cheap nylon brushes. This is where you want to spend at least three to five bucks per brush. And, you know, don't go 69 cents, folks. Spend a couple bucks. You're going to need them to cut in your walls, uh, to your ceilings, your corners, your receptacles, your, your switch uh, areas, your trim, etc. And personally, I suggest that you buy a set so each spouse has one uh, to save time. Um, Barry, should we break for a commercial before we kick back in? I think that would be a wonderful idea. We'll take a quick break and we'll talk more about painting. With Jack Milne, you're listening to the House Whisperer Show at WWDB Talk 860 at WWDBAM.com. And we'll be back right after this. Oro Exterminating has been specializing in wood destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years. Serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties, all inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Oro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide radon testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586-5640. 
or send an email request to boroughinspects at verizon.net. That's 610-586-5640 or email at boroughinspects at verizon.net. Specially created t-shirts by BrainFlushGear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport. BrainFlushGear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles, wave runners, surfboards, snowmobiles, or skateboards, it can be priceless. They offer custom artwork including silk screening, transfers, and embroidery. Speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own brain flush visit brainflushgear.com or email them at contact at brainflushgear.com for your septic inspection and testing needs please consider bucks mod inspections they've been serving the bucks and montgomery county areas for over 15 years as members of the pennsylvania septage management association the pennsylvania association of sewage enforcement officers and the pennsylvania association for professional soil scientists bucks mod inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement please call rob bowie at 215-66 4213 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer show. As the summer months quickly arrive and the temperatures gradually rise, so do the odds of all those filthy and unwanted critters invading your home like rodents, roaches, termites and flies. Oh my. This summer, if you want to feel safe and secure from a possible creeping, crawling disaster, do yourself a favor and call the exterminating experts at Pest Blaster for all your pest control needs, including tests for radon and mold. Please visit PestBlaster.com and you'll be sold. 215-295-5555. Tri-County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 25 years. Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties, serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They've performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors, as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They are licensed in both Philadelphia and New Jersey. For all of your real estate transactions, Transactions. Call Tri-County Inspections at 215-295-2030. For their New Jersey clientele, call 856-853-4224. In PA, call 215-295-2030. In New Jersey, 856-853-4224. And once again, we're back with Jack Milne, the house whisperer at WWDB. And Jack is uh, talking about one of my least favorite things to do, and that is that is painting. But Jack, uh, uh, a lot of people can save a lot of money if they do it themselves, right? Well, absolutely, Barry. And I think this is one thing that uh, almost everybody can do. And um, it doesn't take a lot but uh, of effort, but it does take prep. And I think preparation is the hardest part of painting. And um, so that's what we're going to talk on on this segment. First off, drop claws. Don't buy the plastic ones. Buy the, I'll call them the cloth ones. Professionals use them because they're easy to bend and mold and shape to the room. And, of course, you, you don't plan to spill the paint. But, you know, when you've got two people working and rolling and, and touching up and doing this and doing that, it could be inevitable, and, 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 and it's, a, it's a bad day. <laughs> There's no other way I can emphasize it. Yeah, that's what you call kicking the bucket, huh? Oh, boy, when a gallon of paint spills. So the last thing you want to do is spoil your carpet, or worse, uh, get it on your hardwood floors. I mean, it could be literally hundreds of dollars um, uh, either way to make the repair to one or the other. So buy the drop cloths that the professionals use. You can always fold it up. And you can always use them for getting under the car to change your oil one day. So that's how I use mine when they start to get worn out. Um, extension rods for the rollers. Um, they're very helpful. And some expand. And, and, you know, so you can go up to as much as six feet on those. 
So you don't have to work off a ladder because ladders are dangerous when you're painting because you're bending your body in all different contortions trying to paint that ceiling. So if you can get yourself a good six-foot extension rod that shrinks down to three feet, man, that what a multi-tool. And uh, But I also like the little 12-inch ones because it gets your hands away from the roller. Uh, this way you don't get, get, don't get splashed back. So, you know, buy the aluminum extension ones as you need. Uh, you're going you're gonna to appreciate that. Uh, tape, blue tape, green tape, I don't care what tape you buy, but buy tape. Uh, professionals personally say they don't need tape, but honestly, folks, in my house, they do, okay, because I'm extremely anal. I think that's what makes me a really good home inspector, and most of my trim is clear, so it's stained. It's not painted, so the last thing I want is any type of uh, different color on my trim work. Uh, so buy good tape. Uh, it, it, it does make a difference. It does take some time to lay it out, but uh, you'll appreciate that. And, of course, you're going to have to wrap your door or window trim uh, so it's protected. But, uh, but don't forget your base trim. Um, and, you know, if you want to add designs to your work, uh, the tape actually makes very good cut lines. Uh, clothing, uh, wear old clothes. Count on them getting paint on them. Uh, that's part of, part of the fun of painting. Um, so between the splatter, uh, the mist strokes with your brush or roller, um, if you have old clothes, it doesn't matter. I think I, I wear my old clothes proudly because it shows all the work that I've done on my home. So as you start, I think the first things are first. First off, you know, you want to remove your receptacle plates, switch plates, register uh, both supplies and returns. You want to put tape around all the trim as close to the painted surface as possible, and then bend it to down the tape in order to protect the trim. Uh, one little thing I've learned is put a piece of tape over receptacles and switches to keep the paint off them. Hopefully, you spackle and sanded any old picture, you know, hanger holes, doorknob accidents, um, and you want to make sure that your painted surface is clean and dust-free. And, and believe me, if you did not prime after you made these touch-ups, you're going to see funny spots in your paintwork. So make sure you prime them before you paint them. And always paint your ceilings first. Remove any light fixtures, fans, high hat covers, etc. And for ceilings, please use a flat paint. Um, you don't want anything truly with a sheen unless uh, your wife demands it. But... The shinier the paint, the more imperfections you see, and especially ceilings. If you have to have a sheen, I wouldn't say, suggest anything more than a satin. It's, a, it's soft without being overbearing. So this way, if you paint your ceilings first and it goes down your wall, so what? Because you're going to paint your wall second. This way you get your nice cut lines where it, where it meets up to the ceiling. Now, People feel that they have to really press firmly on the roller, but you don't want to be overbearing. Uh, the last thing you want is streaks in your paint created by lack of paint, but also where the streaks go to the outer ends of the roller. That means you're pressing too hard. So don't be afraid to add more paint to the roller, uh, but at the same time, you also want a good roller pan. I, I do suggest you wear safety glasses. Because uh, when you roll ceilings, anticipate spray back on you, uh, your face and your clothes. Uh, but again, this work is supposed to be fun. Um, as I tell my clients, roll the field, but leave one inch to the walls. So in other words, uh, paint around your receptacles, paint around your switches, um, and, and then roll an inch to the walls because to the walls you want to use your angle brush to marry the, the field to the corners. Um, and then this will give you time to, to, to match it up. But when you're done with your angle brush, then this is where you break out your three inch roller. Uh, so you're blending the rolled look to the corner. So uh, I think that's a great little tip. Um, check your ceilings. There should be no roller stains, splotches, and no abrupt, abrupt starts and stops. So again, to the walls, Prep is everything. Check your tape, check your edges, and then let's go to work. So again, we start with the trim, the doors, the windows, the base trim. And again, I like the angle brush for accuracy, and then hit it with the three inch roller to smooth out the brush strokes. Now again, start on the field, go up and down, no sideways. 
Okay, don't go on angles. Just work up and down. Again, don't press hard, uh, and and you want to apply an, an even coat to the walls, and then use those roller extensions to your advantage. Paint the corners um, after you've rolled the walls. So again, uh, trim and roll. Uh, roll to the trim. Don't get the side of the roller in contact with the trim because now you're cleaning it. And the other thing you have to be careful of is, is don't get the roller to the other corner because now you're creating streaks, and as the paint dries, they're, they're hard to hide. So once you're done, you do have to be patient. Uh, you have to let the walls cure for at least an hour on a sunny day. If it's an overcast day uh, with high humidities, it takes longer. So this is a time to go out for lunch or dinner. Um, and, and, and personally, if you can finish the second coat on the following day, that's actually better. So you want to make sure that the paint is, is good and dry because if it's not, the, the, the new paint uh, will streak over the old paint and then the job does not look as well. For the cut lines to the ceiling, keep a steady hand. In fact, my little tip is I put my left hand under the wrist of my right hand as I hold the brush and steady as you go. And this is where you might want to maybe use two-step ladders with what I call a plank, which is a 2 by 8 or a 2 by 10 so that as you work across the room, you're walking on a plank to keep your hand as steady as possible. But you have to be careful on ladders, especially three-foot ladders, because I've had a tendency of stepping off the wrong side. <laughs> and it's not, it's not, uh, it hurts, uh, to say the least. A bit. Yeah. Um, the other little tool I'd like to have is, is a handheld uh, container. And it looks like an oversized coffee cup. And they, sh and, they, and they give you different liners inside this container. So you can put your wall color in one, you can put your ceiling color in another, and then again, just like your rollers, if you wrap up your brushes, you can use them again, even if it's a later date, as lo even a week out, okay? So wrapping your brushes and your rollers, uh, they will be there for you the next time around. Now, um, give a second coat to your registers and returns if necessary. And the reason for that is they're typically made of metal, and metal doesn't grab paint as well as drywall. So a good second coat, set them to the side, let them dry in the sun if you get the opportunity. Now, after the second coats are applied to the ceiling and walls, again, let it dry two days if you can. And then slowly, slowly peel the tape off the door and window and base trim and see how you did. Uh, if by chance you got paint on the trim, typically warm water will remove it. Uh, you may have to touch up your work with a modeling brush because, uh, you know, you want to get really close and accurate, and sometimes even the, the smaller one-inch brushes are too big. And then, again, I love going back to this, keep those rollers wrapped uh, with or without the handles because touch-ups, bottom line, folks, are going to be required. And you know what's even best is that even after you move the furniture in and you have to make a touch-up, those rollers will still have the paint that you need. So in, in the end, a little bit of time and effort can really have a dramatic effect on the new room, even though this space has been around since the, the home was built. So it's all in the details. People will know if you rushed your job by walking into the room and seeing splotches, streaks, or drips. So really focus on being as clean as you can. Be diligent as to the placement of your paint cans and your brushes. Don't get the dog in the room or the cat in the room while you're doing your work. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> as, like good advice. <laughs> yeah, my... as you may trip over either one of those or the, or the dog may get the, ta the uh, pain on the tail. So uh, vent well. If you have nice days, please open the windows. Uh, put a boom box in and make your time flow a little bit faster and, and, and work together. And at the end of the day, you're going to stand back and, and, and look at your work and you're going to say, man, uh, I'm glad we did it. And then share a glass of, uh, or a bottle of wine and, uh, and appreciate your new work. That sounds so, good. You can save a lot. Of, I know you can save a lot of money uh, because I, I've had painters come into my house. It's hey, you a fortune to paint and did it myself. I can save myself uh, 
a lot of a lot of bucks. Well, it, it does come down to the quality of what you're buying. So you don't have to spend, folks, forty dollars on a gallon of paint. I think a good gallon of paint you can spend twenty-five to thirty dollars at most. Uh, the new the new thing now is having uh, primer in your paint. Um, uh, I'd like to see more results on that before I say go out and do it. But again, a lot of times, especially if you've had uh, kids or marks or scratches or dings or dents, you got to prime your walls first. And again, the biggest mistake is going over a darker color with a lighter color. Uh, you might have to end up painting that room three or four or five times in order to hide that darker color. So utilize the kills. Um, it's also, Barry, this is a good one. If you have any old uh, pine work, um, you know, the, the, the boards that you want to paint over, yep, yep. not always, always bleed through. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to spackle them. You want to prime them with your kills, get this, get it as smooth as you can, and then go ahead and paint your lumber. Well, uh, we, we are out of time on that happy note, uh, and uh, this is it for our afternoon Sunday show, huh? Well, this is it, Barry. We've been waiting quite some time to tell our clients that next week you're going to listen to us at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Uh, wake up and smell the paint, right? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jack Mill, uh, can't wait till next week. Uh, we will be with you Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock. Sunday next Sunday, and uh, so tune in again, not the same time, but the same station, WWDB, for another edition of the House Whisperer Show with professional home inspector Jack Milne. And you can hear previous programs, or you can go to the website and listen to podcasts, uh, thehousewhisperershow.com. Jack, always good talking to you, and next week, we start a brand new time slot. Here we go. Thank you, Barry. Okay, talk to you next week, 11 o'clock.